Hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alberto Villanueva. I'm senior lecturer for the postgraduate department and also the subject leader for the master in environment design. I'm going to be here today uh, trying to discuss how is the structure of the course and trying to solve some of your questions about how it's going to work the next postgraduate year. And the first thing that I wanted to do is like I would like to share with you is uh, my screen uh, where you can find a platform that we have been working during the last year. And this platform basically I, we, we think is the, the best web that represents what we are doing. Basically, this is coordinated with the students. Then you could be part of this website next year if you're here of this platform and all the work of the students and our lecturers are is, is, is here. Um, the first thing that I want to show here is like, if you go to ravenswoodpost.com, first you have the address here, you're gonna find that you have the postgraduate community and you're gonna find different news about what is happening in our community. Then if you are interested in knowing something else about what we're doing here, the first, and I, the first thing that I would like to encourage you is just to come here. You're going to be able to know when the students are doing something specific, uh, wh when are happening the next events, or sometimes you can see like projects like this last one from one of our students about, that presented his project for the DNID Awards. Uh, about the, this was for a campaign for the London Over Underground, uh, expressing that the hashtag London is open. Um, but before we go in depth with uh, all the information that you can find on this website, and maybe you want to ask me about specific projects in a specific masters, and you want to know more about that, I would like to discuss with you about how is the structure. Uh, the most of the students that are coming uh, and they visit us the most of the times are just uh, asking us, okay, what do I have to do next year? I have this interest in this research, what can I do? Um, the the, the postgraduate year is uh, divided in five units. Then we call every unit PE01, PE02, PE03, PE04, and PE05. In the way that this is a structure, you are, you are always going to be working at the beginning with two units at the same time. In this case, PE01 would be research process. And as you can understand, what you're going to be doing basically is research. You're going to have the support of different colleagues and different uh, uh, researchers that they work at university uh, to try to conduct your own research. Uh, we understand that when you arrive here, um, maybe you don't feel like really sure about how do you want to proceed with your, uh, with your year. You just want to discover things. And the process of this unit is more about discover what would you like to do, OK? Uh, this process is going to be a research of three months and you are going to like submit like a paper uh, that is going to allow you to have like the possibility to improve your research methods, also your academic writing skills. You're going to have support at university for the academic team in the student services also if you need some kind of support to do this, uh, these kind of papers. At the same time, you're going to be working in a unit that is the PU2, that the name is Technology Issues. What we want to do here is like uh, postgraduate courses here works like in a very interdisciplinary way. Let's say, for example, that you are coming here to study moving image, a main moving image. Uh, in this way, you're going to be able to work with someone that is studying MA environment design. This unit, what tries to do is like connect students with different backgrounds trying to do briefs that are focusing in, in industry practice to see how you can work together um, at Ravensburg we understand that the future the, the most of the professions of the future uh, is uh, about how to work in different teams about the interdisciplinarity of our professions then what we intend to do is like create like collaborative projects where different students with different backgrounds, they can bring uh, their ideas and they can bring like a final solution. Uh, if you have had the chance uh, 
uh, to investigate more about what we have been doing in the past with our former students. And if you want to check our platform, uh, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, you're going to realize how the most of the success of our students are coming from collaborative projects. I'm going to show you quickly the section of works in our website, and you're going to understand a bit more about that. Then if you can see now on your screen that you have a menu with all collaborations, staff and students. Then if you scroll down, you're going to start to see like different projects that you can discover. But some of these projects that we are working on now are about collaboration. For example, a competition for a driverless car. Our university is located in North Greenwich, in the Greenwich Peninsula, and it's one of the most innovative areas now in London. Uh, many, uh, many startups are based here in this area, and some of them, they have been like trying to develop concepts like driverless cars. Um, what we did in this competition is like we were working with the Transport Research Laboratory and the Royal Board of Greenwich to trying to find solutions about how to create like a driverless car. When you see this, I mean, sometimes you can have a questions about, but what kind of background do I need to have to do this? And I can tell you that the students that they were preparing this competition have different backgrounds. Some of them, they were doing moving image, other they were doing architecture. Sometimes we have had even fashion students that they feel interesting to incorporate like new textiles, to pray with other colleagues on how they can explore, for example, wearable technologies. Um, this is one of the examples where students in groups of three or four, they have had the opportunity to present their projects in an in a external competition with industry. Um, what else we can show you? That the students also, they can do, they are doing at the same time their individual projects. Uh, we have uh, students that they can, for example, be researching about synthetic skins and they are doing, for example, wearable technologies or wearable futures. Or we can have uh, uh, students that are involved more in sensorial projects about neurality, about interaction with the design, like uh, this project of Peter Schaffer. Uh, at the same time, we try to offer you the possibility to, to explore the projects of our lecturers. Uh, the different subject leaders, all of them, they are prof uh, they are practitioners. Then your subject leader is going to be always someone that is working in industry. Uh, this is the case, for example, of Andrew Marsh. Uh, we can see one, one of his projects here. He is the, the subject leader for the Master in Science for Rapid Prototyping and Applied Technologies. Uh, um, Andrew is a recognized and awarded practitioner and uh, here you're going to be able to see one of his uh, last projects that was presented for the Wellcome Collection in London. All depends about the website, the Wi-Fi connection, I'm really sorry about that. If you give me a chance, we're going to try to connect again with the website since that we are experimenting some problems with the Wi-Fi now. Okay. Let's move on. You know where is the project. You're going to have similar projects that you can explore here. Then feel free to explore about that. I mean, if one of these topics is something that you want to study with us, you always can contact us. And individually, the, the subject leader is always going to give you advice and suggestion about uh, what you can do with us during the year. But let's go back to the structure of the course. We were talking about PU1, if you remember. It's about the research process, and we were starting discussing the PU2. PU2, as I said, is technology issues. A students working together, preparing like interdisciplinary projects, and it is divided in, in three cycles. Cycle one, cycle two, and cycle three. This unit is running between October and January, and you're going to have the opportunity to do in the cycle one a collective project in a group, in the cycle two and cycle three, you're going to have the opportunity to start to work individually in different technological issues. When we say technology, I want to make a point here that don't feel afraid about that word. 
we are not expecting that you have to be like a technology advanced person like using all the software or being really uh, uh, capable to use like different like uh, tools etc what we want to do with you here is like we want you innovating we want you exploring uh, technological aspects that can be interesting in your projects and your specific fields okay once you you are finishing the pu1 and the pu2 you're going to start two new units the pu3 and the pu4 the pu3 is the business and innovation unit and I think this is one of the units that make a, a study a postgraduate course here at Ravensburg different than in other institutions. We understand that your ideas, they need also a development in, in industry. How you, for example, if you have a really good idea, how you can create a business with that idea. And maybe or, or not, maybe you want to have just a, a business ideas about how you want to do something related to to innovation and how to do some some of the students sometimes are just asking directly like look i don't know how i never have been in an industry i have been studying my undergraduate before and i would like to have some notions about how business world works okay it's going to be useful for everybody and this unit is coordinated by, by the the head the, the associate dean of business and innovation at Ravensburg. Uh, he's a person, Paul Stember, that uh, is also directing the MDES courses. And his expertise uh, in different like uh, projects is very helpful for the students. Then let's say like we have this prototype, this idea. Uh, he's going to bring like different guests, different lecturers to give you like different possibilities, directions that you can take with your idea. Uh, if you want to present that for a competition, if you want to get funding with your idea, uh, all these aspects are going to be relevant and are going to be like um, discussed during the PO3 unit. Again, uh, we think like working collaboratively is important. You are going to start working doing research about business with your colleagues. We have had in the during the last year very interesting projects. Uh, about our students trying to use their expertise, like for example, one that was industrial designer, the other one that was interactive designer, working at the same time with endless students. And this is where all the students are coming together, trying to present a project that can be funded. Um, at the same time, you're going to be doing the PU4, the concept and prototyping unit. Uh, this concept and prototyping unit let's say that is the beginning of your final major project. The most of the students and the most of the projects that you can see here in the website are basically focused, they, they started with the PU4. And uh, we can discuss a few specific projects in a bit. Uh, like for example, uh, this plug sound machine. If you give me a second, let's say, let's see if, okay, we were lucky now with the Wi-Fi. Then Samira Alawad uh, was a student that was doing moving image, but her interest was not only filming, it was about producing, uh, creating interactions where sound and visuals were really relevant. Then if you explore more about this project, you're going to understand how this project is not just about moving image, it's about her interest in transdisciplinary design. She recreated like a machine that powered by the nature that is in the environment was able to reproduce music um, in a really in a really beautiful way this project for example has been exhibited in the vna uh, and obviously if you are in london probably you know it if you haven't been there it's one of the reference places that they model where where we are going to ask you to go to explore uh, about the activities that they are doing there, about the exhibitions that they have there. This project, as you can see in this picture, is run with an Arduino, but it's not only about these kind of technologies, but you're going to have, during your year here, the possibility to explore these kind of resources. You're going to have uh, weekly or every two weeks different workshops that are extracurricular. Then you're going to have, for example, the opportunity maybe to have a two, three weeks workshop about how to use Arduino. Then 
This allows the students to explore different tools that can be useful, for example, in this case, to develop this project that from the PU4 came to the final of the year project. What we are asking the students in this unit during four months is basically explore, uh, just try to do new things, trying to discover what is their interest there. If, if you think about what you have been doing until now, it's like you have had the opportunity to have a research process, you have had an opportunity to meet your colleagues, you could have that opportunity to create like a group of work of people. Uh, you have a, an opportunity to think like, what are the business points in a city like London, or how you can export your idea to your own country. We have now a colleague that she's uh, researching about how to create like a campaign in Philippines, and she's doing that here now. She's trying to understand all the graphics and the communications about how she can export that idea to her country. Then it's not only about what is happening here, it's about how you can use your ideas and come back to your uh, country and, and develop them. Uh, we have other projects like this project of Daniel Kim, Diary of a Fly. Uh, this project was quite interesting because Daniel was uh, very passionate about uh, virtual reality. And he was, since the first moment that he arrived, uh, quite engaged like oh I want to I want to I want to book in the CLR and I'm going to explain you now what is the CLR I want to book like uh, uh, the headset the Oculus Rift I want to use this technology and as you can see here uh, let me the sound is not relevant now let's see that like this he was just testing how to create a video game in virtual reality and I think what it makes this quite interesting is like all this was coming from a theoretical point of view where he started his research in the PU1 thinking in like the importance of the scale and the meaning of the human uh, and how he could develop a tool to respond to the, the human needs from the point of view of a fly. And that was quite interesting because in all this game, until you don't finish, you are not gonna understand who you are in that game. And that is also a kind of reflection. We, we, we like also the students exploring not just the practical concepts. We want the students understanding philosophical ideas and how they can uh, use those ideas to give an answer through these technolo technology uh, tools. And in this case, this game was very successful. Uh, he received an award. He has been in contact with companies like Samsung. And now uh, Daniel is working here in London and developing more uh, tools in virtual reality. That is one of these tools that we incorporate in the post course because we understand that is what the future is based. Now it's not more about the future, it's now the present. The most of the companies are integrating virtual reality augmented reality, uh, 3D printing, and we and that is what we try to incorporate. Uh, what we try to give you is like uh, how to use these resources, how to integrate that with solid and consistent ideas, and how you can develop your idea and continue, continue with your idea in industry. Uh, we can also show you another example that this I like to show you this example because it was my work. Uh, four years ago, I, I, I decided to explore concepts about uh, in environment design, about overpopulation. And the idea of being here studying during one year gave me the opportunity uh, to explore in ideas that you don't have that opportunity in industry. Then you are in a post framework. Of course, we are gonna ask you for uh, professional standards but why not you don't use this opportunity to explore something that can be like a utopia? And in this case, using the idea or the reference of trying to solve the overpopulation and how to build in extreme environments on planet Earth, uh, the project was based on the planet Mars, uh, how using the water in the surface, we were going to be able to use 3D printing to create like architecture, uh, how through that architecture, is possible to terraform the planet Mars. As you see, there is this kind of component on, on, of science fiction. Five years ago, this was science fiction. 
nowadays, if you follow what is happening uh, in the in the in innovation, in technological innovation, you're going to find out that this is what companies are doing. This project uh, was connected with uh, NASA and European Space Agency. Then that is what we are expecting with our students. I mean, you are going to have the opportunity to have one day per week personalized tutorials with your tutor and another day per week research support. But what we are looking is like you use the rest of your time to complement your research, to investigate, to go and contact professionals, to, to try to experiment as much as possible. And as I like to say to all the prospect students, when, when they, are, they ask us about how this works, it's like I say, it's always up to you. I mean, we try to be flexible. What we try to offer you is the professional advice of people that are working in industry at the same time with the advice of people that are doctors in academia. But it's up to you after that. You, because of that, we like students that since the first day that they arrive here, they try to practice, they try to, they try to experiment. If something goes wrong, I try with something else. Um, four years ago, you're gonna find here the project of, um, of uh, Mike Alger. And this was quite interesting because he was a student that he arrived with and since the first moment that he was in the building, he was just experimenting. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He just came to study a master in moving image and he finished his year doing a virtual reality interface, uh, interface design and studying about pre-visualization pre methods. This research was awarded and he got a job offer from Google, and he's now in California working for Google, developing virtual reality uh, research with them. Then what happened here was is it was just basically the interest of a student, just trying to use the resources that we can offer, but it was up to him. He researched about 3D printing, 3D scanning. He was researching virtual reality, augmented reality, and he was trying to find that space of comfort. Then after a few months with the units that I have explained at the beginning, PU1, PU2, he started to realize, okay, the area where I would like to develop my, my career now is virtual reality. Then after that, he started to see how can I make a business with this or how can I maximize the opportunities in industry with this? And it worked really well for him. It worked really well for many of the alumni. We recommend you to follow the section of news where you are gonna read about what our alumni are doing, where, where they are exhibiting. Uh, the amount of news is not huge. Why? Because our community is really small. Then we don't have like 60 students per master. We don't, we don't think that is that the ideal thing. Then oh, we always work with uh, work, uh, groups of students of four, five, eight, but no more than 10 students because we understand that uh, it's really important to give you that individual and personalized uh, content. Um, I don't know if you have any questions because I have been trying to speak all the time about how the units work. And for me, it sounds like really easy, but maybe for you it's still very confusing because I just showing you a bit the website, but don't feel worried about any, anything because the idea is just to show you more or less how we work okay if you have any okay we have a question here okay please tell me more about the software and facilities needed for the ma msc courses okay that is quite interesting um, the facilities i mean our building that is a rewarded building uh, is a super innovative and flexible building then the facilities are uh, fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you. Are really great facilities where you are able to work in flexible spaces, open spaces, where you can be working with an undergraduate student if you want, or you can be working with external people that you want to invite to the building to work with you. But at the same time, you are going to have like a small dedicated space, like a laboratory, where you are going to be all able always to be working with your MA, MSc colleagues to have your research and progress there. Um, 
and about the software um, the software we always offer creative uh, adobe uh, uh, creative I, I i'm never really sure how to call this is the creative suite of adobe i think then you're going to be able to have free access to illustrator indesign uh, photoshop all the adobe pack uh, also you're going to have access to all the autodesk software for free uh, we are always happy to bring all the professionals that maybe can uh, bring you like test uh, or tasting like all the software. Uh, software is not usually a problem, but what we say to the students always is like what is relevant is the time that you invest using and practicing with the software. That is quite important because the lecturers here are not going to be here to tell you how to draw a line or how to create like a 3D in a software. We are going to have extracurricular activities. We are going to invite people to give you workshops where you are going to understand how to use this software. But don't forget that you, you, you would need to make that effort from your side also. Um, what we have also is like a CLR that is a central loan resources department. And that is for me that I was coming from another country like uh, four years ago was quite like it had a huge impact because basically you can book any 3d printer any camera anything that you think is useful for your project and you can take that and go home with that and practice during four days uh, you also have a library we have we have the first material library in a university in the in the uk we have been the first ones to have one basically this is like a space where you are able to touch to practice with materials you're gonna you are gonna be able to order these materials to test in your projects and the library team is going to be very useful because they are going to help you to they are going to help you to use uh, their resources and we have two big prototyping areas in the level seven and the level nine of the building one is dedicated to fashion and the other one is dedicated to the rest of the technologies uh, where you're gonna be always uh, you're gonna have always support 9, 9 a.m to 9 p.m from prototyping technicians using laser cutting using 3d printing doing 3d scanning using like the, the traditional uh, craft uh, tools then you're going to have always that support. We have another question here. I will be studying for a full-time course. How many days do I need to be at uni? OK, uh, officially, you are requested to be two days per week at university. They are usually on Tuesday and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, you are, you're going to be here around five hours developing or the unit of research or, or the unit of business and innovation that is the unit with more theoretical content and the wednesdays where you're going to be three hours specifically with your tutor okay these are the two days that you are requested to be here always but there are going to be many other extracurricular activities that they can be happening wednesdays thursdays we can arrange something specific with a professional from industry that is coming on a monday but basically the most of our work happens between Tuesday to Thursday. And after that, the students basically when they are doing a full-time course are here all the time. The students are sometimes are requesting the building open on Sundays and we try to do that a few times per year. Saturdays, the building is open 9, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then you're gonna have access all the time to the resources. It's up to you. Sometimes you even want to do your own freelancing work in the building, and the building is open for you for that. And then I have another question here. Do Ravensburg offer extra training or workshop with softwares neither needed for the course? Okay, yes and no. <laughs> Why I say yes and no? Uh, we are going to develop and we are going to have a specific workshops where uh, some experts are going to be showing how to use the software. Okay, but 
do a, all the interdisciplinary content of the course is not possible to offer you training in all the software. Then what we usually do during the academic tutorials where we have the opportunity to review the content of your project is like, if we realize that you, for example, you need to use Cinema 4D and your other colleagues are interested in that software, we try to arrange something for you. At the same time, the institution for all the students, undergraduate and postgraduate students, is offering like um, evening courses, short courses, uh, other courses for the Greenwich Borough. All of that courses that are a good amount of courses, like maybe happening three days per week, are gonna be offered to you for free. Okay, but it's really important that sometimes if you have a specific software that you want to use, uh, you need to communicate with us because uh, we need to plan that with you. It's not, all, uh, it's not that we can promise you, okay, you will have this software. It's something that is gonna need to be discussed. Okay, but yeah, uh, you're gonna have that during the, during the year. Any other questions that you have? I also would like to show you in the meantime, that uh, if you explore the platform, you're going to have all the courses. And this is what is interesting. You're going to see like applied technologies, communication design, environment design, interactive product features, etc. All of them, they are there. But you also are going to have the opportunity to explore who is the people, who are the people that are part of the team. Then we have the dean of the School of Design, that is Lauren Siegel. Uh, the head of department, Professor Jeremy Gardiner, that is going to be part of the year in a sabbatical year, but the deputy head is going to be the acting director, Dr. Brigitte Six. You can see her projects in the website. Paul Stember, associate dean and head of design and innovation. He's going to be the person responsible of the PO3 unit, the business and innovation unit that he's going to be working with you. And after that, you can see the different subject leaders. Beatrice Newman for the Master in Fashion, Alexa Pullman for Wearable Futures, Peter Smith for Communication Design. Every, every, of, every one of them, they have like the link to their LinkedIn, to their websites, then it's an opportunity for you to explore what is their professional work. You are gonna have also access here to other people that are coming to give you master classes, coming to give you like, for example, the, the head of research, Nicholas Lambert, is gonna be coordinating your research. You have the head of the enterprise and innovation. It's something that I wanted to mention. At, un at University of Ravens, where we have the incubation space, then basically students can apply to develop their business there when they finish. Then you can apply to get that place. And if you get awarded with that place, you can have your own business, your own startup in the space. Let me see, because I think we have another question here. You mentioned it earlier about leaf industry projects. Can you explain more? Okay, let's use a, a real example. During the last year, uh, I, we discovered that IKEA was going to open one of the one of the new stores in the UK, and it, it was it, it, it is going to be the most innovative store because it's the most sustainable building in the UK about IKEA stores. And basically, we invite them to come to the building. And after discussing with them, what we are trying to do is trying to prepare a brief for following years for, for example, in this case, it was for undergraduate students, but it is the same with postgraduate students, where something that is interesting for IKEA and something that is interesting for postgraduate can be created as a brief. In this way, the students are going to be developing something that IKEA is interested on. And that is probably going to be uh, producing product design based in circular economy and uh, sustainability. That, that is one of the ideas. Then what we try to do is attract big companies that they are trying to change and they try to innovate in the industry uh, to do something with us. I'm a, am I expected to have the topic for my final project or will that be need to be agreed with the academic? And that need to be agreed with the academic, okay? We are flexible. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, say, look, 
uh, Alberto, if you are my student, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. I have been doing all this research about this, and I would like to do my final major project about this. That is possible, why not? But I would like to tell you that everybody that is coming here should be open mind and should be ready to just to discover because coming with your ideas since the beginning, it, it could be a mistake. It wouldn't be my advice. You can explore the ideas, but uh, experience tell me that all the process is going to always transform your idea in something else. It's because of that the expertise of our lecturers, our academics, is going to be helpful to support your experimentation and your research. When I visit, uh, yeah, let me see, I'm missing one question here. Yeah, when I visited Raven's room before I saw the department called incubation, can you explain more? And if this, and if there's any link with postgraduate? Yeah, as I was mentioned a few minutes ago, um, we have this space on level one at university uh, that is called incubation. Basically, is a uh, as you probably know a bit about incubation spaces, these are spaces ready to for startup companies that they want to develop their ideas and they work in industry, obviously, with their companies. Then what incubation usually does is offer a few spaces to the students that have been studying with us and they have a powerful idea that they want to develop. In this way, you would have the support of the university and the institution to develop your own idea in the industry, uh, in, in industry. Then th that is more or less, and we can show you more uh, if you visit the building or if you want to have individual chats with any of us, we can explain you more about that. But as you can see here in the website, in the platform, High Smith is the person that is in charge of that space of incubation. Um, let me see, because I think we have any other question here, no. Okay, I think I think we have asked the most of the questions. Uh, there are many aspects that maybe you feel curious yet. Don't feel worried about that. Just contact us if you want to know more about more specific structure, if you want to know more about how the lecturers work with you, uh, scholarships, everything. For example, the scholarships is something that you have in the website. Uh, I will tell you that you have to apply as soon as possible because the deadline is really soon. Um, I think if I'm not wrong, it's the 15th of June, Friday, and the announce could be the 29th of June. But obviously, just in case, it's better to get in touch, okay, to see what possibilities you have. Uh, which we, like, we usually like to discuss this individually with the student. Um, we also if you are a student, you are going to have the opportunity to exhibit your project in a postgraduate degree show. That is happening always at the end of the year. And I wanted to mention this before we finish this uh, webinar because I think it's a really important aspect of the student experience after one year, having the opportunity to exhibit uh, your own project in front of industry professionals, also inviting your family Sometimes uh, the most of the students that are from other countries, they, they like to invite their family members to see what they have been doing during one year studying in London. Uh, but yes, before I finish, I just wanted to say like, uh, I appreciate you so much your time. And uh, any question that you have, go to the website, contact us, and we would be very pleased to have a conversation with you. Um,